Welcome to the Sermon Audio Podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message today is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father, we ask, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Open our minds and our hearts. Speak to us your truth, your absolute truth. Speak to us that truth that might not only would our faith be strengthened, but we would also, by faith, be able to recognize the difference between truth and falsehood, truth and lies, truth and deceptions, truth and anything else that opposes it. Help us in faith to be drawn strong, close to you, that we may walk in your way and know of your love, your mercy, your grace, your salvation. In your name, amen. So now that you've had a little time to think about it, how do you tell the difference between the truth and a lie? How do you tell the difference between the truth and a lie? Okay, Jane? The source. Okay, the source. Consider the source. I'm going to get back to that. Thank you very much, Jane. Lou? The truth comes true. The truth always comes true. means it always comes to pass. It always will take place. Anybody else? So look on their face. Okay, so David, body language, look on their face. Maybe eye contact. Okay, yep. Anybody else? Motive. Motive, okay. What do they have to gain by lying? Okay, anybody else? Randy. Yep. I want you to think about this. So if you're listening to somebody and they're speaking something they're not sure if it's truth or a lie, then David's method is very good. Where's their eye contact? What's their body language? Is there anything that might give them away that it's a lie? But if you're reading something, for instance, you're reading something on that little scrolling part on the TV news, you're reading something uh, that uh, is on the internet, you're reading something out of a newspaper, you're reading something uh, in print, how do you tell the difference? And then we go back to what Jane said. Consider the source. Okay? All extremely important. We live in a world today that wants to speak lies to you. All over the place. Especially in the season we're in. We're less than six months from an election. You watch a commercial. I'm going to ask you this question. How many of us lie? How many of us have ever told a lie? Raise your hand. Okay? Now, with that same thought in mind, do politicians lie? Have you witnessed it on a television commercial? Half truths. And that's really the thing, Barry, isn't it? Because they'll mix some truth in with some falsehood. And so, yeah, that's believable. And maybe the other part that's not true is also believable. And we end up being, what? Confused, right? If you're me, you end up being a little bit angry. Angry because you know that what they're saying isn't true. You know that what they're saying is intended to mislead Intended to misdirect, intended to do damage. 
And, and as we hear our scripture reading today, that's the kind of thinking we need to have to understand it. So as Jeremiah is speaking, we have to recognize the situation this is in. God had sent Jeremiah to proclaim that destruction was coming. God had sent Jeremiah to proclaim destruction was coming because God's people had fallen away. God's people had become unfaithful. God's people had basically turned their backs on God. And what did God want? Did God want to destroy them? Well, we've got to have some response on that. Let me ask you this. Does God want to destroy you? Okay. What does God really want? What did God want for the people of Israel? What did he really want for that to take place? Yeah, let's look at verse 17. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord. Well, wait a minute, I didn't want that verse. Go to verse 22, Ben. Or Wes, who was ever at the computer. But if they stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned from their evil way and from their evil deeds. So now, what does God want? To turn from their evil way. To turn from their evil deeds. Basically, now say the word, repent. repent. And that's what repent means. To turn from to. To turn from evil. To turn from sin. Turning back to God. That's what God wanted. But what motivation would they have to turn from their sin if there was no threat? If there was no thing to worry about. What motivation? None. So how do you think that God felt about those who were telling lies in his name? Because we go back to verse 17 now and listen to what it says. This is God speaking through Jeremiah. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord. It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. All is well. Do we hear that kind of stuff right now? There's no such thing as inflation. <laughs> and here's the thing. We are being lied to from more than one direction. It's the lies that are coming from politicians. And then there's a liberal portion of God's church that's buying into these lies and helping tell them. And that's what drives me more crazy than anything. And that's exactly what was happening in Jeremiah's time. Here these guys are calling themselves prophets and they have no intention of listening to God and speaking his word. No intention of sharing his truth. No intention of helping people find God, the true God, in the true way. They are speaking lies for what reason? Why are they speaking lies? Say that? Well, not the prophets. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. Why are they speaking lies? Personal gain. Popularity. Right? That's exactly why. They want to be popular. They want to be thought well of. And they want to, you know, get the people thinking, don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen. You're all good to go. The gas prices are just what they are. Prophets didn't see that. Anyway, I want you to, as we're listening to this, recognize this is the same kind of stuff going on right now. What's God's biggest problem with this? You know, think about, first of all, what's this doing to Jeremiah's credibility? Destroying it. 
He's the only one speaking God's truth to these people and his credibility is destroyed because there's a whole bunch of false prophets that are saying the opposite thing. So God's wanting these people to come to repentance. God's wanting these people to turn around and what happens? Lies are being spoken in his name and so they can't turn around because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to receive it at all. So the next question I'm going to ask you is why do people not want to hear the truth? Right. It requires change. Let me ask you as good Lutherans, do we like change? You hear that old joke, right? How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? Change? What change? We can't change that light bulb. It's been here since we started. <laughs> and, and the point of all of this is that, yeah, there's a fear in that. Fear in change. Fear in doing something different. Doing something that's going to make me uncomfortable. Doing something that is going to force me out of what I am currently happy with. And that's what the problem was here. They didn't want to hear the truth. But not only does it destroy Jeremiah's credibility, who else's credibility does it destroy? And this is more important, of course. God's. We're not going to listen to Jeremiah, and certainly we're not going to listen to God. Here's what God has to say about it. Ben, second commandment. Say it with me. Second commandment. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name. Stop right there. Say that again. Lie or deceive by his name. That means that everyone who is using a pulpit, everyone who is using a church, everyone who is using a congregation and not speaking the truth of God's name, not speaking the truth of his word, not giving the real message of Jesus Christ, is breaking the second commandment every time. Because when you use that forum to lie, you're destroying God's credibility and with it the church's credibility. It drives me crazy every time a group of churches, a group of pastors are coming together and say, oh no, that's okay, and here's the proof. And they'll pick and choose Bible verses to come up with their answers. And here's what I want you to hear. God's word is absolute truth. Say it with me. God's word is absolute truth. And there's so many that say, no, everything's subjective truth. It depends on your situation. Nope. God's word is absolute truth. But too many people buy into the subjective truth model. Ben, could you show the video? This is a section from uh, the Passion of the Christ. And this section is not in the scriptures. This is kind of poetic license you know, by uh, uh, Mel Gibson as they put this together. And this is a conversation that is between Pilate and his wife, Claudia. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, start closer to the beginning, so just when we begin the conversation. Pause there, Ben. Go back a little bit. I want you to see those words again. Sorry, Ben, I hated to do that to you. Do you remember what it said? What Claudia said? 
If you can't hear the truth, no one can tell you, right? And that's where we're at with a lot of people today. They don't want to hear the truth. And so no matter what truth's being spoken, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it because of fear of change. They don't want to hear it because of fear. They don't want to hear it because they like where they're at. And in the rest of this, you know, Pilate lays out, you know, here's my situation, here's my truth. And there's a lot of people that are going to say, well, here's my truth. This is what it has to be because it's my situation. And I'm going to say this to you. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear on abortion. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear on marriage. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear on homosexuality. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear about gender. Can I say more? But here's the other thing. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear about God's love. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear about God's mercy. The Bible in absolute truth is very clear about God's grace. And the Bible in absolute truth is very clear about forgiveness of sins. And the Bible in absolute truth is very clear about eternal life. So while people think the church is only about condemnation, the church is only about causing me problems by speaking the truth, the church is only about those things that are going to cause me pain, the church is really about the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the salvation of God. To turn from evil and to receive his good. To turn from evil and receive his love. To turn from evil and receive his mercy. To turn from evil and receive his grace. To turn from evil and receive the gift of his salvation. We don't want to take everybody out and beat them because they don't believe like we do. But we don't want them to end up in destruction either. And that's the difference that we have to make known. They're unwilling to hear or accept the fact that there is eternal judgment waiting, whether they believe in him or not. But there is eternal salvation and eternal life for all those who do. That's what God wants to give. That's what God wants his people, all people, to receive. In John chapter 8, Jesus said this. So the, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, read it with me. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, read it loud, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Free from Sin, free from death, free from power of the devil, free from eternal condemnation, eternal punishment. Now, to put this into an even greater context, <clears throat> chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, read the first verse differently. If Jesus says, I am the truth, that means we can exchange the word truth for the word Jesus, the name Jesus. Go back to the previous verse. Read verse 32 with me again. Insert Jesus for truth. And you will know Jesus, and Jesus will set you free. That's the truth that we all need to hear. The truth 
of salvation, the truth of his love for us. So how do we get through to those who don't want to hear the truth? It has to start with being what Jesus is. Being truth, being love, being kindness. It's not about condemnation, although that is certainly a real and true, not merely threat, but certainty for those who refuse him. But being truly loving and true in what we do and say. We're going to face a lot of terrible things in the times ahead because the world is on a path toward destruction. But don't let it discourage what you know to be true. Don't let it discourage your faith, your love for God, and the certainty of your salvation. Don't let it discourage everything that we know about Jesus our Savior. Ben, go to the very last verse of the epistle reading. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12, the epistle reading. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, Read this with me. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Jesus endured the worst suffering of all. He didn't stop. Are we going to face rejection because of what we believe? Are we going to face persecution because of what we believe? Are we going to face hatred because of what we believe? Don't grow weary or faint hearted. One thing's always true God loves you, He saved you, He forgives you, He gives you eternal life. Don't grow weary or faint hearted because He is the truth and He lives forever. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit, be and abide with us all. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.